Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make vegetarian shepherd pie. That is all time my favorite dish to make in the cold winter months. That is absolutely delicious and very easy to make. Let me show you how that is done. Here are the ingredients for the meaty, meaty bottom. One pound beyond meat plant-based ground. Five ounces of the thinly sliced mushroom. One chopped onion some carrot, that is one cup, some pea, that's one cup as well, I'm using frozen one, handful of the dry mushroom, soaked in the water overnight, and that is mushroom soaked water, one cup, two tablespoons of red wine, any kind of house wine is gonna be okay, one tablespoon of tomato paste, three or four uh, cloves of, of garlic, I find it chopped, I love garlic, so I'm putting four cloves, but if you're not a big fan of that, two will be fine. One beef beyond cube vegetarian, one teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper to start with, and then after that, you know, as you cook, you will put more salt and pepper. A few fresh thymes and a few uh, some bay leaves, two tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna use the vegetarian Worcestershire sauce, and then for cooking oil, I'm using avocado oil, but you can use olive oil if you like. You can see my heavy bottom Dutch oven ready to go. I'm using Dutch oven, but if you have like a heavy bottom pan, that's gonna work. So you put some oil, a couple of tablespoons. It's at medium heat. Put all of the onion, salt, and pepper. Salt helps the onion to caramelize, so put some salt. And then also it actually enhances the flavor as well. Put all of the dried mushroom. Mix it well. Put all of the fresh mushroom chopped, put the rest of the pepper and salt, stir well to mix. Let that cook in a medium to medium low heat until the all the onion and mushroom is become very soft and then you can actually start seeing the color. It's been four minutes, it's cooking pretty well. The onion and vegetable look soft and have it adding some color. So now it's time for us to put next ingredient. That's gonna be garlic, stir well tablespoon of tomato paste the tomato paste is turning color and then let me show you it's stuck to the lots of vegetable now we're gonna deglaze it with a two tablespoon of like red wine if you don't want to use alcohol you can supplement that with the cherry vinegar or just even like a small amount of grape juice I love using wine now I'm gonna add flour and then cook it for a couple of minutes if that it looks so dry, just drop a little of water so you are not going to burn flour. The goal here is you still fry the flour a little bit so it's not going to smell like flour. Okay, that looks well cooked. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons of, of Worcestershire sauce. If you don't have this one, you can supplement with uh, just tamari soy sauce or even coconut almonds or just maybe add more wine or grape juice of your choice. I think that that Ushir cider sauce actually adds a lot of umami flavor, so I love putting in there. All of the mushroom soaked water or broth of your choice. One cube of vegetarian beef. This is one cup of chopped carrot, almost size of the pea, as you can see, thyme, and bay leaves. It looks a little bit dry, so instead of using only one cup, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna add quarter cup more. Now you put all of the beyond meat. If you're not a big fan of veal meat or if you don't have access, you can supplement that with the cooked green lentil. Not a red one, red one is gonna get smushy. Or any kind of split pea, black bean, charo bean, pinto bean, whatever bean you prepare. Veal meat, you can treat like a real meat, so you can break it down to mix it very well. The last ingredient is the pea. This is the frozen pea, one cup, has been thawed in a room temperature. You can use canned pea, mix everything very well, 
after you break it down the your meat we're gonna cook it for 10 minutes in a low heat and then that's all that is needed big pot of water with a steamer inside and then i have some water coming all the way up to here you can boil potato i do not like to boil potato so i'm gonna do the a little boiling and steaming at the same time i did not have enough potato so this is pound and a half potato i've chopped it in a one inch or less a little bit slightly bigger than i think one inch of the cube I'm gonna boil it and steam it at the same time and then general salt I'm gonna cover it I'm gonna cook it for 10 minutes until it's like it's cooked well cooked and you can just smoosh it with a spoon or fork I'm gonna add my cauliflower maybe in a five minute mark so it, they are going to cook evenly so my potato and cauliflower is well boiled and steamed I'm gonna use my pastry cutter because it's a lot and I don't want to do it for forever so my mashed potato slash cauliflower is not going to be completely smooth but that's how I like it. If you want to make it smoother, you can put more liquid or just use potato only. Cut butter. I'm using vegan butter but you can use the regular butter. I just like the taste of this vegan butter. I'm using Earth Balance. I like to put a little fresh cracked pepper but that's optional. This is half cup of almond milk but you can use any milk. I'm gonna start with the maybe quarter cup. For me, this is pretty good consistency. So I'm gonna just, not, I'm not gonna put the rest of the quarter cup. I just put quarter cup of almond milk and generous amount of sharp cheddar cheese or Parmesan cheese. I have mixed up that. If you have chive, please should put chive. I wasn't able to find the chive, so I'm putting scallion, finely chopped. Always make sure to taste it before you adding any more salt and pepper. I think I can put a little more pepper, a few crack of fresh ground pepper. The next thing is I'm going to show you how to assemble. First, I want to show you the consistency of the meaty bottom. This is good consistency. Make sure to pull out your dime and uh, bay leaves. If yours is not this consistency, just put a couple of cornstarch with the water to thicken it. But mine looks really good, so I'm not going to add the, add the cornstarch. This is the bakeware I'm going to use. The first, you put all the stuffing in the bakeware in the bottom. Make it flat. You prepare mashed potato or mashed potato with cauliflower on the top of it. Put all of them in. Even out the surface. If you want to make it more cheesier, you can grate some cheese in here, any kind of cheddar or parmesan. If you want to make it a little bit more pretty about it, you can line with pork. This one is going under the broiler for 5 minutes to 10 minutes, depending on where your broiler is located. Mine is on the bottom, so it tends to burn, so I'm going to check on it in 5 minutes. But 5 to 10 minutes until the top is somewhat golden brown. And then after that, I will let this sit for 10 more minutes. And then after that, we're going to taste it. My shepherd pie is out of broiler for and then rest for at least 10 minutes. It looks really pretty and smells amazing as well. And then I'm going to actually cut it and give it a taste. Look at the, this is so pretty. All the chart mark on top because of broiler. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. Looking great. And I'm going to actually taste it. I can taste the mushroom, umami flavor, beefy flavor from the Beyond Beef, and then also the caramelized onion. I have all of this different texture going on of the like carrot and then pea. And then of course like softiness of the you know, mashed potato top. And then salty, sweet, and then it's every flavor it actually has it. So I hope you enjoy watching my video. Please try my recipe and let me know how yours go. And thank you very much for watching. Until next time, happy cooking. Bye.